Okay, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, today's edition of the Online Cultural Majlis. Can you all hear me? Thumbs up if so. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, online majlis I conduct from my hometown of Sharjah. I've moved to Sharjah from Dubai uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, I'll be here for some time. So I wanted to welcome the office in, in Sharjah. Uh, a few uh, housekeeping notes just before we start jam-packed session today. Uh, going forward in Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem, by the way, <clears throat> going forward in Ramadan, we will be conducting the Majlis two hours later. So instead of the usual time, which is uh, 7 p.m. UAE, we'll be moving to 9 p.m. So two hours later on both Saturdays and Wednesdays. Uh, on Saturday, I have um, Mish'al Gargawi will be speaking. So next Saturday, Mish'al Gargawi, uh, UAE uh, writer who lives in New York. And next Wednesday, I have... Uh, the director of the uh, Palestinian Museum, uh, Dr. Aida uh, uh, Laidi, if you know her, she'll be speaking on Wednesday. So we'll have uh, these two individuals coming up. I also want to say a shout out to the DC Majlis. Uh, thank you so much to the guys over there. I see, uh, I see a number of them here. So thank you all for recommending Naila and Ranin to me. So uh, this is an initiative from them. And uh, also, please make sure to type your questions on the channel on the side. Make sure you add your full name and affiliation. Um, I might bring in a couple of you, but we have a jam-packed session. So I don't want to waste time. I'll begin by introducing uh, everybody so that uh, we can begin today's session. We have three of the uh, bright uh, young uh, Gulf uh, uh, creatives. They come from different fields. They are not all artists. Uh, but they are all involved in a very uh, vibrant, creative scene here uh, in the Gulf. Uh, begin with Ranin Bukhari, uh, who is a multi-hyphenated creative from Saudi, working uh, in the art scene there. Uh, Ranin actually has curated a number of exhibitions that are very important, including the British Council collection, British Council being one of the most important collectors of art in the West. People don't really know that about them. She also, uh, she also curated the major retrospective of a Saudi modernist, Mohammed Al-Ghamdi, one of my favorite Saudi artists. And most recently, uh, she assisted in curating the Desert uh, X Al-Ula, is that Desert 10, Desert X? I don't know how to say it, but it's a major event in the Saudi calendar. Then we have closer to home, where I'm from, the UAE, Rashid Naimi, who is an actor and singer, who is based in Boston, uh, pursuing his MFA in, uh, uh, in musical theater at the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Uh, he's also auditioning for regional productions in, around the US. Uh, and I'll share some more news about him later. And last but certainly not least is uh, Naila uh, Al Khalifa, uh, who is a, from Bahrain, and she combines both her passions, technology and art by creating VR installations. And we're gonna show you a couple of her uh, installations that she's created. Uh, Naila doesn't know this, I'm telling her for the first time, Naila, you and I went to the same university. We both graduated from the American University in Paris, but I'm sure you graduated many, many years after me. So it's nice to see uh, a colleague from the same university. We will be beginning um, with Ranin Bukhari. Uh, Ranin, you good to go? The format, the format of today's talk, by the way, is each of the speakers will have three to five minutes to present their work, and then uh, we will reconvene here uh, together and, and start throwing questions at them and discussion to all of you. Okay, so Ranin, I'm going to uh, spotlight your video um, and unmute you, and then I love how much power this thing gives me. Ranin, can you hear me? <laughs> Testing your yes, audio? Yes, I can. I, I can okay, hear you. Okay, so you I'm me? sharing my screen. You guys hopefully can see the screen. Ranin, do you want me to give you access to the uh, remote control? Or do you want me to click for you? Uh, if you can give me access, that would be great. Hadar, inshallah. Okay, so I do this every day, and I still uh, find myself uh, struggling with the, uh, with the technology here. So, um, okay, Ranin. I have to stop my video. Okay, I have to share desktop, remote control. Ranin, there you go. Ranin, you've got the video, you've got the control now. I, maybe, yes. 
Yeah, okay, go for it. I have, okay, this is the first time I'm doing this too. You can just click here, I, I place the mouse. Okay, great. Um, hi everybody, I'm Raneen Bukhari. Uh, thank you, Sultan, for inviting us uh, to this wonderful discussion. Um, like Sultan said, I'm a multi-hyphenated creative. I do, I work mostly in the cur curation field, but I also um, do a lot of consulting with artists. I, I work on um, just uh, any kind of uh, exciting work that comes my way, I'm always down. Uh, I started actually, uh, luckily enough, my parents uh, have a beautiful store in the Eastern province called Desert Designs. Uh, they uh, have, it's, it's a lifestyle store that focuses on uh, Saudi culture and design. And I was lucky enough to have a space upstairs to experiment with um, just promoting and supporting artists that I like. And in 2012, with my partner Najla Sahemi, we started an initiative called Loud Art, which was uh, an open call, a thematic open call that uh, happened yearly. Uh, we would start it in uh, my space in Al Khobar, and then we would move it to different cities that would host us and invite us, like um, uh, Riyadh. We did it in Naila Art Gallery and in, um, I don't know why this is flipping, and in. Uh, in Jeddah, we were hosted in Ankud Art Space, and also um, uh, we did it in Oman and in Bahrain once or twice. Uh, so that went on until 2017. Uh, so that was a wonderful experience that really propelled my curatorial career. Before 2011, I really didn't know uh, what a curator was, and I just kind of fell into it. Um, and then over from 2012, 2013, I kind of got, um, I, I got more and more involved. And then um, for uh, 21, 39, one year, we hosted, a, we did an exhibition with um, Arwan Nermi in uh, Faran Studio, which is Ahmad Matur's uh, old studio in Jeddah. Um, and then that was a great propelling uh, time for uh, doing this program that the British Councils really wonderfully organized, which was um, uh, a curatorial practice program for people that kind of fell into the practice in Saudi without having any uh, proper academic um, experience in it. And we were six women and we got the chance to work with one of the biggest collections in the world, the British Council collection that only collects British work, but uh, luckily enough, British work, British artists are from all over the world. So we got to have uh, artwork by Anish Kapoor and David, um, um, what's his name? Uh, wonderful artists from all over the world. And um, that lasted for a whole year, that program. And then we got to play with the work and host one of um, uh, Britain's artists. His name is Muhammad. Uh, uh, Ashfaq Qasim to do actually um, in an in, insight site specific installation. Uh, so that was a great experience. And then uh, from there on, uh, I host, I did a bunch of freelance work. And um, uh, more, more recently, I did the retrospective for Muhammad Al Qamdi. Uh, that was in Hafez Gallery. Muhammad Al Ghamdi is one of the modernists of Saudi Arabia, a great painter who moved on then to working with um, found objects and um, uh, creating masterpieces. And what a wonderful fellow! Uh, and what a great experience that was to work with a body of work that spans over 25 years. Um, and then this year, I had the great honor of working alongside uh, Ranim Farsi, the curator for Desert X in Al Ula. Desert X is a um, outdoor installation experience that happens in Palm Springs that uh, Saudi Arabia hosted in the Al Ula Desert. And uh, we had uh, 14 artists from all over the world. Um, um, uh, to come in and put up their work for two months. And uh, I was working with alongside her on all matters, um, logistics, shipping, cart creating, all the fun stuff. Um, 
uh, that was a month long experience and we lived in the desert. And I can't believe that happened in 2020 because now we're all stuck indoors. <laughs> We're good. Okay, we're good. Thank you so much, uh, Ranin. Uh, I will mute you, uh, Rashid. Um, I'll have to uh, find you here and unmute you. There you go. Sorry, Rashid. Stop sharing screen. It's so much easier to stop sharing screen than Rashid and Naimi. I'm unmuting you. Hello. Rashid. Hi, Rashid. Uh, Hi. How are you doing? You're good? Really well. <clears throat> Trying to get mentally ready for speaking from so many people and strangely not seeing everyone. I should, uh, you, you should be the one who's most used to this because you're the performance artist here. You know, you think, you think I should. But... <laughs> right. Would you like to control the remote, the remote or shall I just uh, go, will you just tell me which slide to go to? Um, I can tell you to just click next, I guess. Okay. Okay, so let me share my uh, let me share my screen. Uh, bring back my desktop. There you go. Okay, Rashid. Hi. So um, my name is Rashid Al Naimi. Um, I am a singer actor. Uh, currently, well, currently I'm in the UAE because of the COVID nineteen, but I'm uh, based in Boston. Um, quick, like history of how I got to where I am. Um, I'm mostly known for my social media presence. Um, when I started on my Instagram, um, creating music covers um, on my YouTube for creating mashups um, of Arabic and English music, um, which is where I kind of started my um, journey as a performing artist, whether it comes mainly to music. Um, throughout that journey, I kind of dabbled into these platforms of social media, which kind of led me into the scene of events. And I performed a lot in events around the UAE. Um, I did a lot of gala dinners. I did a lot of um, corporate um, entity award ceremonies, um, which kind of gave me um, a footing into the performance aspect outside of the social media or the camera world. Um, so I did a lot of that and then the time came where I had my military service and then during that service um, Made it a, a kind of a self journey of where I can like reflect on where I am and what I need to do and what's my next step um, And based on that I decided that I would want to continue into my field as a form of study and not just as a hobby because I felt I was lacking from that perspective um, Next slide please Sultan. Um, in which I took a step and I decided to apply to the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would get accepted, um, but received that email of acceptance and then for months it sent me into this euphoric state of just excitement and joy about what's to come. Um, the Boston Conservatory, I actually have one month left to get my MFA in musical theater. Um, it's a bittersweet feeling of having to finish my studies, but I, that place was my kind of my setting stone into this whole new world that I entered. Um, having now dabbled with stuff like ballet and jazz dancing and um, found my new passion acting um, and bring those all into one medium, which is musical theater. Um, next slide, please, Sultan. Um, in which I had my first um, theater experience in, uh, in, in Massachusetts, um, doing a play called Faith Powers Love, which is such a small production to the point where we had around maybe um, six audience members each night, like to the point where I could just like watch the audience members eye to eye because it was just so small amount of people. But it was the, the experience that really put me into the door of theater. Um, I had to experiment with stage makeup because I like I, I never had the idea of what would I do with stage makeup and hearing stuff like um, stage left, stage right, and like kind of setting into those um, vocabulary of theater. That was my first space where I kind of grasped those things. Um, next slide, please, Sylvan. Um, and then as part of our MFA program, we are required to do a show within our school. 
And this was a play that we've done a night in um, Hollywood, a day in the Ukraine, which was kind of, this is the first place where I really got my hands on the big logistics of theater um, and understanding what it was like to be in front of an actual live audience and work off of that and um, work through tech week, technical week and understand the lighting and understand the backstage and understanding the different people involved in actual theater production. Um, next slide, please, Sylvain. Um, and then um, I got the, the, I got blessed with getting accepted to Goodspeed uh, Festival of New Musicals um, in which uh, it was located in the Goodspeed Opera House, which was the where, um, if you guys are familiar with, the sun will come out tomorrow, bet your bottom dollar. Uh, the musical Annie got originated from that, um, from that opera house. So for me to get accepted and go do that workshop there was like an insane um, idea that not only was this world present so far away from me, but now I was actually close to it. And I was actually participating with the people whom I grew up watching. Um, next slide, please, this one. And then came like my actual first show that was outside of an, any educational system, outside of, of just um, doing the process of auditioning, um, being getting a call back and then and then getting the role. Um, this was done. This is me playing Bill Sykes from the musical Oliver, in which uh, it was done in New Rep Theater in Massachusetts. Um, this was a bigger scale theater, so we had around 200 to 300 people every night. We played for 30 shows. This was my like first production, and and I I'm I'm very happy that it was a, a like for me going through all these steps. Um, I always imagined the world of the arts and theater as being this thing where you sing in a cafe and this person would scout you and then just sends you into the spotlight. But it really is a form of practice that you have to dedicate yourself to, to do a step by step. Um, having done Oliver, which was such an insane um, opportunity. Next slide, please, Sylvain. I got to work with people like uh, Austin Pendleton, which was, he originated uh, um, the um, motel role on Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway, and he's acted in so many other Broadway shows. And I worked alongside a, uh, my music director, Sariva Goetz, which has done more than 15 Broadway shows in the music team. Um, so for me, it was just an insane, out of mind experience to just not only do this, but be in presence of such like Broadway legends as well. Um, Next slide, please, Sultan. Um, I sat that, that, and then from that role that I played, um, there is a local award in Boston's um, Critic Association in which the, the award, the theater scene in Boston. Um, so I got nominated for that award for outstanding, well, nominated for outstanding um, uh, musical actor. Um, so that was the, now I can call myself a nominated actor. So that's cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's basically what I've been up to the past two years. Thank you so much, well done, uh, Rashid, for being nominated. Uh, we'll come back to you in a minute. We're going to be heading to uh, Naila. Naila, I'm going to uh, spotlight you and then unmute you. Uh, Hi. And, uh, how are you, Naila? Uh, would I'm you like good. How are you? Very good. Uh, where are you? In DC, I think, right? I am. Yes, I am in DC at the moment. What time is it there, Naila? It's, um, it is currently 11.18 a.m. Okay, so Neila, you have the remote control if you wanna uh, if you wanna process. Otherwise, I can do it for sure. you. Sure. Uh, that would be great if you could do it for me, just because, uh, in, just in case that I go over the time limit, you can stop me at any point. Oh, I, I like you so much right now. <laughs> Uh, so I, my name is Naila. I am a virtual reality artist from uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain. And what, uh, what virtual reality art is, is creating art in a, a virtual environment using uh, an HMD. They are not called goggles. They are, it's called a head mounted display. And uh, I wanted, before I go into what I do, I wanted to talk about my beginnings and why I got into this field of art. I wanted to start with, uh, very quickly, with uh, the photographs of my grandmother, who is one of the first archaeologists in the GCC region. 
she opened up her home. She used to go on excavations, uh, usually with younger women, because that's what she encouraged. She encouraged uh, women to take on roles that were meant for men. And she also opened her house for, uh, to, host, uh, to uh, house these artifacts. Um, because there was no museum at the moment uh, when this photograph was taken, which was in the 60s, the National Museum opened in the 80s. Uh, she is my main inspiration because a lot of my work has to do with ancient artifacts. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Yes. Uh, this is a little bit about my life. Uh, I, the picture on the left is a photograph uh, taken in Palmyra, Syria. Uh, I took a family trip there and this, uh, unfortunately, this is a very, very greatly damaged uh, site at the moment, but this was the beginning of my interest in uh, art history. And the photo, that's the photo on the left. And the photo on the right is uh, me partaking in one of the programs with the Louvre, uh, with uh, the university that Sultan mentioned, the University of Paris that we both went to. Um, I have done programs to the Louvre for two years of uh, focusing on ancient artifacts. And this is me uh, in the photo uh, discussing my research. Um, and next slide, please. So uh, the, the merge of uh, art and technology came about when we, when my husband started his studies here in DC and we decided to, we built two computers together, but one of the computers that we built together uh, focused uh, on, uh, it was VR, it was a VR ready computer. And when I researched uh, VR art programs, I thought to myself that this would be a perfect opportunity to have people experience ancient culture in a different way, just because I, we, I had a feeling that it was not being communicated uh, and, and, and talked about. So this was one of my first virtual reality installations that was accepted into the Bahrain, the 45th edition of Bahrain Annual Fine Arts. And what it is, is a, um, a, a Dilmun ruins that turns into a Dilmun paradise. And it was made in the arts, the ancient art style of Dilmun. Uh, going to the next slide, please. Uh, this is an artwork that is actually a video. Uh, there's no sound, so you can play the video, uh, so fun. Uh, this is a virtual reality painting of uh, an, uh, a traditional home, the home of Sheikh Isa bin Ali. And this was presented at the uh, Bahrain uh, National Day event in Washington, D.C. And this was to experience a painting of an old traditional Bahraini home uh, in a different country, as well as learn about key architectural details of, of traditional architecture in the GCC region. So I talked about the wind tower. I talked about the, the, the foyer. I, I talked about the... Um, the shaded architecture, uh, shade from the sun. I talked about the Dehlis, the waiting room uh, before entering and seeing the, the Sheikh. Uh, you can skip to the next slide uh, if, just because of time. Uh, this uh, uh, installation was a collaboration between me and a chef, uh, Chef Hassa, otherwise known as Curiously Hungry. And what this is, you can, you can play the video but mute it because I think it has sound. We can mute the sound. If Can we possible. play the sound for a few seconds? Sure. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it skipped. <laughs> okay. So what this is, um, is a, it is a collaboration of virtual reality, art and food, and it takes you on a journey on the Silk Road. And uh, this was done with Hesla. Uh, this takes you to uh, the, the ancient art styles of uh, China and Uzbekistan and Syria and Turkey and Italy. And it is, um, so guests would be able to have the food that Hessa made, which is the evolution of the dumpling. So she went from the Chinese dumpling to different variations to the ravioli in Italy. And, uh, and what I did was I talked about ancient art styles and things relating to the journey of the art styles on the Silk Road. And this, this right here is Turkey. Uh, the star map that you see is actually an ancient Chinese star map that I drew in virtual reality. Uh, and the, the last the last one is Italy and is the sinking of Venice. Uh, we can go on to the next slide just because of time. Uh, and in, within this uh, uh, evening that we created, Hesla and I, uh, there we have another headset where guests were able to sign their name and it like, created a virtual guest book with each and every signature of the person that, that came uh, to the event. And I turned it into a, a collective art piece. And moving on to the next slide. 
uh, over here is also a video. There's no sound, so you could, you'll be able to play it. This is an example of how it looks like, how I look like working in my virtual environment. I'm not sure if... No, it doesn't, it doesn't have the option to play. Oh, it doesn't have the option. That's fine. Well, you can see me with the headset. This is me drawing the elephants of Salvador Dali, and you can see the little headset, and, and, um, and this is just me working in my environment. And on to the next slide. Uh, so me, I, I recently started, uh, during the pandemic, I recently started doing uh, virtual reality art streams where I would stream myself painting in the virtual world. And these are two examples. Uh, one is Van Gogh's bedroom in Arles. And uh, the other one is names of people that entered my stream and I would write their names in the stars. Wow. On to the next slide. <laughs> Uh, this is this is what I've been currently involved in and hopefully what is in my future. Uh, I just recently got accepted in a master's degree in American Univer American University here in Washington, D.C. And I will be um, combining uh, what I've been doing with these two communities into my studies. And these two communities on the left, Educators in VR and VRA Live, are actually uh, virtual communities that I've been recently, recently been a part of. And uh, I'm working with them to bring virtual reality art into the mainstream. I'm uh, building my own virtual art gallery that people with or without headsets can experience. And I'll be putting my first solo show in virtual reality. Amazing, and thank you so much. It. Okay, we're gonna end the uh, we're gonna end this slide, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be unmuting uh, my my speakers. Uh, you know, my problem uh, to all the speakers uh, is that I haven't received any questions. All I've received is praise for your work. So this <laughs> this is this is a problem I have now. Uh, is that people are too people are too nice and they're not and they're too they're too taken by your work so i need to i need to make sure that people start um, uh, sending me questions so the first thing i would say is uh, are yeah there's another question from metha swedi thank you metha question for rashid could you tell us how different the experience of performing for us for small and big crowds were from each other Oh, they're honestly, they're incomparable. The beautiful thing about theater is that it's the thing we're learning um, is it's all about the present moment. It's all about the truth of the present moment. And you always react of who is there in the present moment. Um, the audience of 300 people laughing invokes a very different feeling to um, the sound of a child laughing in a smaller group of uh, theater goers. So it's an always an experience of who is present. Um, the same audience on a Sunday night show is very different than the audience of a Monday show. So there's no um, kind of like system to it. It's, that's one of the beauties of live theater. It's live, it's there, it's always different. Okay, uh, we have a question for uh, Naila. Uh, and the, oh, wow, so many questions came in now. That's great. <laughs> Naila, can, uh, can you host exhibitions in your virtual gallery? Yes, absolutely. I can host exhibitions in my virtual gallery. That's, that's initially uh, what I'm doing. Because, because of the pandemic, I had several things canceled. Uh, one of them is a solo show. So I'm, I'm hopefully building, uh, uh, building worlds and creating a solo show in virtual reality. So I will be hosting exhibits. It's in okay, the works. So one of my one of my students from uh, Georgetown, uh, Judith Qanee, here. Question for Ranin: What does the curatorial landscape look like in Saudi, uh, and what, in your opinion, can uh, propel uh, the the modern curatorial scene uh, in Saudi Arabia uh, at this time? Okay. Um, so the curatorial landscape, I guess it's it's pretty. Um, like we all know each other, all the curators of Saudi Arabia kind of know each other. It's a very uh, small knit group. Uh, we all help each other. Uh, for example, when I did Desert X with Renim Farsi, she's a curator. We're both um, colleagues and equals. And so she brings me on to projects. I bring her on to projects. When I can't handle something, I pass it on to somebody else that might be able to take on a new, a new project. So it's very um, loving. It's very kind of, um, we just kind of help each other. It's it's a it's a great time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, projects coming up now with because the Ministry of Culture has just been open for a year 
So there's a lot of nice support and nice projects popping up uh, just like Desert X. Uh, the modern curatorial space and supporting the emergence of museums. Hopefully, uh, with uh, the government taking such a big role in uh, creating museums from a, a contemporary art museum to a, a modern one to, uh, to different kind of um, mediums and so on, uh, that will uh, give space and uh, make more private institutions want to do the same. Uh, we'll see, Art Jamil Creative High is supposed to be opening, inshallah, once this pandemic is over. So I think uh, it's a, it'll be a, a really good like um, renaissance period in Saudi Arabia's art scene. Inshallah. Uh, obviously, now we're getting so many questions. We have 200 participants. Uh, Rashid, I was expecting this question. Uh, so it's coming from Amr Abu Khalil, and he's asking, uh, I'm sure you have faced a few obstacles and challenges. Did you ever have any thoughts to step back? Every single day. <laughs> but it's um, you got to move past that, I guess. Um, for me, it's, I guess there's a mission now is to moving the art form of music and theater from a medium that is to be enjoyed to a medium that could be participated in, which I think is what the struggles most of us don't see ourselves in that role. Um, so it comes down to these ideas of representation. It comes down to these ideas of, of participating. Um, so if, if we can build that community to support one another, the steps become much more easier and then the thoughts of stepping back become um, much easier to tackle and handle. Okay, uh, Naila, by the way, guys, if they missed, you could just uh, re reshare it because, uh, mashallah, the, the, the list is growing very fast. Question for Naila, hearing about your innovative work, and this is also from Maitha Suwedi. Thank you, Maitha. Um, hearing about your innovative work during these times feels very timely. Could you tell us more about how your work changed and remain the same during the pandemic. Sure, uh, I've, I've, I feel like that I've, um, I've gone from solely uh, pr uh, producing virtual reality installations to creating accessible immersive art and um, accessible immersive art that is not only uh, thought prov thought provoking thought thought provoking but also educational and um, and and it's this accessibility uh, because we're in these times uh, the time of the pandemic uh, it's this accessibility that's key and um, I want what my goal is is to uh, create something that everyone can experience at home so so far what I'm doing these days is I'm streaming live streaming uh, the process of how I do my work I recently joined a, a, a platform called twitch and I started streaming and creating videos that I will soon create a YouTube channel for uh, to, to showcase uh, how I do my art. Um, I assume this question from Hafsa, Hafsa Khadiri is for you. What's the impact uh, of the digital experience uh, on, uh, on, on culture and on curators? Mm. Well, every, everything is kind of in um, seed, seed mode, like sowing mode. We're kind of in um, more research activity, more uh, uh, just like uh, gardening, and then waiting for things to happen and things to grow later on. So it's a good time to work on projects that need a little bit more time and slowness, which is something that we don't have the grace of in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Everything is very short term and very like do it tomorrow. Uh, so this is a nice uh, little pause to have a little bit extra time just handed to us uh, by Mother Nature. <laughs> uh, Rashid, we have Rosanna from Jeddah, Saudi, ask, saying that he's 15, he's inspiring to go into drama, theater, comedy. Uh, do you have him to do that? How can he reach out to you? Uh, what so, Do you offer any mentorship and coaching? Oh, I'm way into the start of my own career to even offer any kind of coaching. Um, but honestly, if you can give him anything, it's just giving him your support. That's all he would need at this moment. That's all I can give you. And it's all going to be from there. It's all going to happen from there. Okay. Do you do any coaching? Now? Why not? Well, you know what? I did get my MFA. And so I'm actually um, hoping to do some more 
teaching exercise and teaching gigs, teaching gigs, I love how I call it teaching a gig. Um, but um, in the future, that certainly can be a possibility. And I see myself doing it, but not right now. Okay. Naila, we have a question from Selena McKenzie, uh, who says, uh, where do you see the role of art in the future where everyone gets empowered to create, um, to create with technology and human machine collaborations? This is something that's that's actually growing. Uh, a lot of people think that that this is something that's new. We, if if you um, if you've been into the cultural medjus and you saw Miss Mrs. Halabi's beautiful beautiful presentation, she where she was creating art using computers in the seventies. This is something that's that's. Um, it's not something that's new. It's something that's that's been around, uh, but during these times, it's growing. Um, it's there, there is a huge uh, there's a huge interest in it, uh, as and and you can see from now uh, there there's actually a new wave of crypto artists where they use cryptocurrency with with digital art. So it is something that is really really apparent and it's taking off. So we have a question from A. B. Thomas uh, who says um, in this in this time with this pandemic, uh, what would you suggest are the best ways? Different stakeholders in the ecosystem, the government, art, galleries, media. Uh, can support creatives right now. Why don't we begin with uh, Ranin? Mm, well, uh, the nice thing that's happening from a lot of institutions are uh, relief funds. Uh, so I think that's uh, a big thing that needs to be supported by a lot of different entities. Um, the uh, Red Sea Film Festival was supposed to happen in March and uh, they had to cancel. It was the first film, the uh, International Film Festival in Saudi Arabia. So instead of uh, spending money on big gala dinners and uh, uh, hotel rooms for all their guests, they did a relief fund for all the artists that were affected by, um, by the pandemic. So I think that's a great, uh, this is a great opportunity to start funds that can continue um, and not just end at this moment. And then uh, similar to what I was saying earlier, it's a great time to start on projects that require a little bit more time. I can't talk a lot about it, but I've recently been approached to work on a really great project in Jeddah. And that requires a lot of interviews, a lot of looking at archives, a lot of looking into the history of the space. And so uh, it's a good time to really do a lot of digging so I want to see if I can bring a couple of people. Uh, someone mentioned Samia Halabi. Uh, I believe that you are here uh, online and uh, would you uh, wave if you like to say anything? I think Nalia Naila mentioned her name. Um, is she waving? Because I have too many people on my screen. Is she? Is Samia? Okay, I can't see her. But how about, I'd like to bring in, until Samia gets back to me, I'd like to bring in uh, a, a young uh, uh, aspiring curator, maybe to uh, to say a few things. Uh, Bender Wazan is a uh, a uh, is a Kuwaiti uh, senior at uh, North uh, Eastern in Boston, and he went around the U.S. attempting to sell a show, not sell, but sell the idea of a show of uh, GCC Arabian Peninsula artists to galleries in the U.S. Bender, I want you to share your experience. You have one minute. Share your experience about what was the reaction to all the galleries that you went around the East Coast. Sure, sure. No, uh, thank you very much. I just want to say big respect to all the speakers so far. It's been an amazing uh, talk. So thank you for having me on. Um, I've had, of course, a lot of challenges because uh, I'm young and I, and I went into this thinking that it was like a very impossible thing. Uh, but basically, uh, for the past several months, I've been working on a show for young Gulf artists. And um, I wanted it to be in the States and I didn't want it to be in the Middle East because I wanted it to start, you know, uh, strong. But of course, I've come across several challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge, and, and I just want to focus on this one challenge, was finding good artists. Uh, the digital world that we live in now is so saturated with media, especially in the Gulf, and this is just my opinion, but with mediocre uh, artists with very large followings. And I think that the main reason for this is because of encouragement. Uh, I think there's a very high level of encouragement in the Middle East, especially in the Gulf, and which is amazing. I'm not saying that's bad, it's great. But I'm saying because of our population is so small and that our culture is built off of generosity, we tend to forget that constructive criticism 
is actually very important towards the development of an artist. Um, so based off of my experience and, and my opinion, purely again, uh, I think some of the greatest artists that I've found were the ones that were staying at home all day and they have no following online at all. And it's so difficult to find them, but they're focused on their craft. They're developing their craft. They're very critical and they're very sort of intimidated to present their work and, and show their work. Uh, and I wonder if this is just because they don't know how to start or what, but those are the artists that I was sort of looking for. Uh, and I just want to... I have to interrupt here. I'll have to interrupt because we've gone over the minute. Sorry. But thank you so much. I want to give a chance to our speakers. There's a lot of mediocre art out there. Uh, Ranin, I don't know, somebody, does somebody want to come and uh, defend the artists from the art and say, no, 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 they're actually are good. We have enough criticism. Um, Ranin, uh, Naila, Rashid, any one of you. Jump in, um, Ranin. I think that there's a, a big gap, actually, when it comes to critique. Uh, when it comes to constructive criticism and when it comes to um, really voicing your opinions. I agree with Bedir that we are a culture of niceties and uh, in the beginning of uh, our contemporary art scene, it's nice to have uh, just people supporting you and just uh, saying, yeah, keep going. Uh, but we do need to create the culture of uh, creative criticism, con uh, constructive criticism and, uh, and have it from people that we can accept it from. So I think if uh, somebody unknown comes and tells an artist your work is not nice, I don't think they'll accept it as much as if somebody like you, Sultan, would come to them and tell them, I think you need to work a little more on your work. So uh, yeah, uh, there needs to be proper critiques that have uh, studied and mastered this. And then, yeah, I think we need to get that going for sure. Also, um, I wanted... I wanted to I wanted to jump in with that. That's a, that's an incredible uh, point, Bender and Ranin. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, I wanted to jump in and say that uh, we. I feel that people think that young artists um, have a platform, and that platform is social media. However, social media is not enough. Uh, I really, really do feel that their young creatives are being underfunded. Um, and I say this because I see it, uh, it is the reality in Bahrain. One of the, some of the best artists uh, I've seen create their own collectives and create their own communities. And they come together and they create something that they hope to be sustainable, but it's not sustainable and runs out of funding and closes. One really good example in Bahrain is Melja, Melja Group. And uh, I've met some of the best creatives in that space and they come from all walks of life. They can be photographers or actors or poets or or traditional artists and digital artists as well. And because it's underfunded, it just it's not a sustainable thing. It it lasts for a year or two and then closes. So I feel like uh these types of initiatives should be funded. Thank you. Rashid, do you want to say something? Um I mean, my field is a bit different than, than that scope of field, but um, I would say that um, for the theater scene to, to be able to offer feedback, and we have to create that culture. So I think maybe the theater scene, the acting scene is not there yet to um, take on these issues, but it's, I guess, before entering those issues is just creating this kind of base of culture and understanding about that art form so we can help, um, help with that. Yeah. Would you accept someone to critique you, Rashid? Oh, um, my, it, it, we're, we're, I am nurturing myself to learn what and what not to take personally and from whom. My instructors are constantly um, sending back adjustments and fixes and all of that. And it's you really have to find which critic do you listen to and to ignore and which instructor do you actually take his feedback honestly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by the way, the uh, the chat is really, really uh, on fire. There's a lot of comments. I would recommend you guys go over the chat. I will save it so that uh, I can send it to whoever wants it. Any journalists who want it, email me. I will save the chat for you. But I'd like to invite uh, Sami Halabi, the great Sami Halabi, who agreed uh, uh, to say a few words. Maybe, Sami, if you want to share a word of encouragement or criticism or advice to young artists. Thank you, Sultan. I loved hearing these three young artists. It is wonderful. Uh, my comments are to just encourage 
Uh, it takes years to learn how to know who to accept and who to reject as criticism. I love hearing what everybody and anybody has to say. I ask everybody, but you know, then you have your private moments and you winnow it and decide what we really meant. But I want to add two things about uh, one of the comments that we should avoid being Euro Eurocentric or America centric. We should respect ourselves respect our location, and also when we talk about democratically accepting everyone as an artist, we have to learn to be accepting that uh, the audience has the right to judge as well what is good and not good. And therefore, I found in my experience that everything that is made has at least one lover. So it's easy to become egocentric, <laughs> And, and difficult to become accepting. Uh, and for me, I listen to you and, and it makes me say, Samia, you know, stop being so egotistical. The world is full of artists, you know, collaborating and listening to all of you is the richest thing that I can experience. So thank you. Thank you so much, Samia. Uh, and uh, okay, well, uh, back to you, Ramin, back to you. Uh, you want to say anything? I mean, I have so many questions for you, but do you have any uh, comment to make? Uh, that was so exciting, actually, to have uh, have Sami Halabi speak in our talk. That was so sweet. Okay. But, and I so, agree with her completely, 100%. Million for me. <laughs> so people are saying, one of the questions is, if not social media, then where do you promote yourself um, in, a, in an affordable way? Um, I've been seeing, uh, sorry, go ahead, Nate. Oh, I was just going to say um, that uh, one of one of the su successful things that I've seen is uh, communities. Communities are the ones that people banding together to create, are and and co and collaborations that come out of these communities are the ones that I see the greatest works of art. And and I feel that if um, private the private sector and the government see these communities thriving that these communities should be funded okay i uh, agree with you naila that's a really good um uh, artist run spaces are such a big thing in other artistic communities and it's definitely something that a lot of artists need to push for okay. there's a really good example in the uae bait 15. bait 15 go on sorry bait 15 is a great uh, artist run uh, platform initiative in um in abu dhabi I think that can be emulated elsewhere. So, uh, Rashid, I have a question from Marwa Ghamrawi, who's asking, could you tell us more about the live theater th scene in the UAE? What are the challenges facing artists there? What would you take back uh, from your experience as to support and revive the theater community in the UAE? Um, it's, it's, it's difficult because for me now, this is a world that I'm entering and then I'm noticing how um, it's not as present in the UAE. It definitely had its moment, had its time, and there are small things happening here and there, but it's definitely something to reinvigorate, to, to, to push again. My, um, the way I'm taking it is I'm still pursuing my career in the USA simply because I am exposed to so much more there. Um, and then it makes me jump a lot of hoops and jump a lot of steps into learning what I can. Um, and then coming back here and then instead of going through those obstacles, I can immediately jump ahead and then set something up. Um, but it, it, is, it is tough, it is tough at this moment, but that's something that we, we need to be aware of um, and then support however we can in many different forms. Um, Ranin, I have a loaded question really from Mesa Kanaan who is asking, uh, how did the project of the Desert X and Al Ul about? Is it going to happen again? And how did you choose the artist? Concentrate on the last part of that. So I wasn't the curator for Desert X, Ranin Farsi was, and um, she was the one was, who selected the artist with the Royal Commission of Al Ula. Uh, they um, really were looking at artists that um, can do large scale works in uh, terrain like the desert of Al Ula. Uh, there's not a lot of artists that can just like have that kind of scope. But to what was lovely about this was to give an opportunity to Khaliji artists and Arab artists 
to really dream big and to really think beyond the confines of a white cube or a public art setting. It is a, a, an, an immensely huge work that was happening over there. I really I wish everybody goes and looks at, how, at the works that were displayed. Um, you can check it on the Desert X Instagram. Um, uh, but yeah, that was how it, it was a vision from um, Prince Sultan uh, who, who decided that uh, this needs to happen in, in Saudi. And um, it, was a, it was a great experience. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, we have a question for uh, Naila from Giacomo Piet Pietro Lamborizio, who asks, uh, as the, when the pandemic started, almost every art fair and art gallery started their own virtual reality viewing room. Have you experienced them? What are your thoughts? What suggestion would you give them to make them more enjoyable? Uh, yes, I have experienced a couple of them, and this is just for uh, my own research. Uh, some of uh, I I have a feeling that some of these spaces um, are not uh, they, they they don't have uh, an actual knowledge of programming languages, uh, and and I feel that they, they it was very rushed and it wasn't well thought out. Uh, some of them did have bugs. Uh, however, however, it, it, it doesn't diminish the fact that they, they tried to, uh, to put these spaces online. There are some that, uh, some of the spaces um, in, in, uh, in social VR applications, such as uh, Altspace. Altspace is an excellent social VR application that you can access without a virtual reality headset that has, that uh, focuses on building worlds with a software called Unity. And you, they, they usually have the, the best spaces that I've seen. Okay, so again, we have um, a lot of com a question to all the comments from uh, all the panelists from Sarah Al Kabi. How do you financially sustain yourself within a career in a creative industries in the Gulf, uh, where the general perception is that it's high risk, low return field? What advice would you give someone entering this uh, this industry? Um, I think uh, uh, Rashid uh, or Ranin. Yeah, for me personally. Um music was a tough scene to enter in. Uh, so I had to maintain my regular day job. Um, but it was really finding the markets where you don't see. So when I entered the events business, um, started doing events, um, that kind of really made me financially stable um, for a while. Um, but it's really about getting creative and reaching out to people who sometimes don't see your value and finding those niches of spaces that you never thought could be sources of income um, and, and then just trusting in that. And those sometimes really work. Hello? Hello? Okay, I can, I can hear all of you except so far. Yes, sounds like. I believe he's cutting out. <laughs> your other camera's clear, your main camera's not. You're still cutting out. <laughs> I guess I just want to add to what uh, Rashid was saying. Um, that it's 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 really nice in the in the Gulf at least that we have a family home and a family place to go back to um, that can save us from you know most of the struggle it's a big privilege um, and like you were saying uh, in response to one of the questions if uh, all parents over here would just support their children's its aspirations uh, to uh, become creatives that would be great movement in the gulf absolutely Maybe we can answer a few questions that are by ourselves out so sure. So long we've taken over. <laughs> okay, guys, send over your questions. No, I'm just kidding. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, he's back. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a question to Ranin. Did the sustainability of an Ula environment, uh, was that taken into account in making of the exhibition? So uh, the RCU, the Royal Commission of Al Ula, it's very, very, um, very, very compliant with environmental sustainability. Uh, so yes, we had a lot of rules and a lot of things that we could we couldn't do because of uh, 
uh, their advice and their rules and regulations. There were many people on site uh, focusing and making sure about what we're doing. So uh, while um, having an art show in a place like Al Ala might not sound like the best thing to do for in the environment, we were really taking all precautions possible to make sure that we're being careful with the with our surroundings. His network bandwidth is low. <laughs> Luckily, I have a backup. You had this so, option, why didn't you use it? Okay. <laughs> huh? Well, it's a backup because I'm using one for questions and one for uh, easier to. Uh, okay. So we have a question about um, oh, celebrating mediocrity. Yes, yes. Wow, I'm just going over all these questions. Um, yeah. Rashid, are you going to make the USA your home, or do you have plans to come back to the UAE? Um, for the present time, uh, the USA is going to be my destination, simply because it's offering me a lot that I can soak up. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, what about you, Naila? You're based in the US. Yes, we are based in the US. We are going to be here um, for some time. My husband is doing his PhD, and I will be starting my master's degree this fall. Okay. Um, yeah. Ranin, have, have you been invited to curate shows outside the uh, year? Um, and would that make a difference to you? Uh, I would love to work on things outside of Saudi Arabia. I haven't yet. Um, what the nice thing about working on Desert X is that it's an international platform and um, it's based out of Palm Springs. And so we've been in talks to do something here. I'm in Los Angeles, by the way, at the moment. Uh, so, so it might be a good time to work on stuff here. Okay. Uh, Naila, would you consider hosting a virtual platform, a show for uh, Rashid and, uh, and an exhibition for Ranin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be incredible. Yeah, that would be incredible. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I think this is my internet telling me that I've overloaded the internet in Sharjah. So I think it's a good time to uh, say thank you so much all for joining us. Ranin from Los Angeles, Rashid from the UAE, and Naila from Washington. Thank you so much, everybody. The questions will be available. I will save them. The recording is going to go out to everyone. Um, have a wonderful evening, morning, whatever you are. And I'll see you guys on Saturday. Okay? Thank you. See you. Thank you, Sultan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Truly. Be safe, everyone. Bye. If, if you have Bye. any questions, please contact everyone on, on their socials. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.